It's the last Sunday in February and that means it's time for Kuna Brussels Kuna, the final part of the opening weekend in the Flemish Ardennes of Belgium. 201 kilometres, 11 climbs, three cobblestone sectors and a healthy smattering of wind. This is often one earmarked for the sprinters but we had all the ingredients to make it a very hard race to get there. Didn't take long for the early breakaway to form at the start of the day, but it wasn't all plain sailing for everybody. Heinrich Hausler coming to grief here at Traffic Island early on. Afterwards, unfortunately, he was holding his left arm and clearly in pain, but thankfully he was able to continue in the race. The early break consisted of five riders, the Dane Mikkel Björg of UAE Team Emirates, Boris Vallet of Bingo Valoni Bruxelles, Roy Ants of Alperton Fenix, Hugo Uhl of Astana and the young Norwegian Jonas Abrahamsen of Uno. The crash at the foot of the Côte de Triou with 67 kilometres remaining held up a number of riders and if you look closely one of those was Gianni Moscon of Team Ineos and he was a bit angry throwing his bike at a rider from B&B Hotels, a reaction for which he was subsequently disqualified. Not the first time that he's been at the forefront of controversy. A puncture and a very slow wheel change for Björg would unfortunately spell the end for his day out front which is a massive shame as they still held four minutes as things were split into pieces behind. Over the top of the outer quarrement and almost all of the strongest riders of the race were at the front. Trentin, Van Marke, Kirkelera, Stiebart, Sturven, Degenkolb, Narsen and Benoit amongst others. As they came to the final climb of the day though, the Kleesberg, they were about to be caught by the chasing group. But the end of the climbs didn't mean the end of the attacks. A new group formed moments later, Cole Brelli Kung and the Belgian champion Merlier part of that one. But behind, De Koenig Quickstep appeared to be working for their sprinter and Dutch champion Fabio Jakobsen. And he sure had some firepower in front of him to do that chasing. Cue more attacks, this time from yesterday's victor Jasper Sturven, who had recovered remarkably well from his efforts. Greg van Avermaet also particularly attentive and active. Wasn't going too well for the world champion Mass Pedersen, although he had done a lot of work for Sturven, and with 32 kilometres to go, was clearly paying for those efforts. It was one after another for van Avermaet though. His best placing is seventh in this race, and he seemed determined to better that today. In the end, the break would be caught with exactly 30 k's remaining, but initially by just one man, Kasper Asgreen of De Koenig Quickstep. He finished second at the Tour of Flanders last year and is not a man you want to give an inch in a race like today. The break did their best to latch on to the Flying Dane, who managed to pull out almost half a minute's advantage over the next 13 kilometres. Behind Ineos Lotto Sudal Team Sunweb working for their respective sprinters, but despite the strength in depth, they weren't making any inroads into the gap. Asgreen made another acceleration with 17 k's to go, which meant that just Valet was left with him. The bell rang to indicate one lap and 15 k's to go, with the gap actually increasing at this point. It would be over 30 seconds before the main group crossed that line, but it would come down to just over 20 as they got towards 10 k's to go. And then came a second acceleration from Asgreen, and this time it was day done for Valet too. The question was, how much strength did Asgreen have left in his legs? He still hadn't been caught with three k's to go, but two rides were caught out, going straight on at a roundabout where they should have turned left. It turned out to be a nail-biting finale. Eight seconds the gap with 1,500 metres remaining, but the chase was running out of numbers and out of strength. Into the closing straight, and Asgreen took one last look over his shoulder to see the bunch still some way in the distance. Heinrich Hausler of Bahrain McLaren was the first to start a lead out for Bill Bauhaus, but at this point, it looked to be too little, too late. And so it proved to be. One last effort out on the saddle for Asgreen with 100 metres to go, and he had it. Quick check there just to make sure, and then he could breathe a sigh of relief and raise his arms aloft as the winner of the 2020 Kuna Brussels Kuna. Back to back wins for De Koenig Quickstep in this race, then, both of them solo in an event which is more often than not won by a sprinter. That's their 14th win of the season and the fourth of Asgreen's career. There's no doubt this man's going to play a pivotal part of De Koenig Quickstep's cobble campaign this spring. You wouldn't put it past him winning one himself. Nick Zolo the best of the rest in second, Christoph Jakobsen and Sturven rounding out the top five. Colbrelli having to settle for six, Ben Swift in seventh. <laughs>